Welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show. Uh, okay, today what I'm gonna do is be testing a Mead Coronado 90 millimeter solar scope. Now, I'm not really testing it in the daytime viewing. I'm actually going to be testing this in the nighttime viewing. Some of you might be asking, well, how am I gonna do that? Well, Mead actually claims that the Coronado 3 version, you can take off the filter from the front. Let me just do that. Just want to be careful, go nice and slow. And take off the blocking filter, which is like the diagonal. It's actually a pretty, uh, pretty long inch and a quarter. Actually, you know what? I did not notice this before, that it has a two inch focuser. Um, I should have thought of that, but I, I didn't really think that you could put a two inch diagonal instead of an inch and a quarter diagonal. I, a full two inch diagonal, and then that way I could use a two inch eyepiece or an inch and a quarter eyepiece. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So that's actually kind of neat. The entry level 80 millimeter, 90 millimeter, and that kind of thing normally does not come with a two inch, or I guess the older models, it's inch and a quarter, but it's actually kind of neat uh, for it to do that. Now, so I'm just raising it a little because now it's a lot lighter due to the fact that that front lens cell uh, and uh, the uh, filter is very heavy. Okay guys, so the total weight with the Coronado at the start when you saw it with the filter, the original is 17 pounds. So that's a little bit heavy for a 90 millimeter. Uh, we're gonna be testing it again. Uh, Mead claims that this could be used taking both filters off. This can be used as a uh, acromat refractor or a doublet refractor for the nighttime viewing as well. Now most solar or dedicated solar scopes cannot do that. Prior uh, solar scopes that Mead had, and uh, as well as uh, Coronado, the original uh, version, you could not do that. So it's actually kind of neat that it, you could do that. So right now, after taking off the front filter and putting in a two inch diagonal, it brings it down from 17 pounds to 12 pounds. Now I also did test off camera, taking off the two inch diagonal putting in inch and a quarter adapter and then an inch and a quarter diagonal, it brings the weight down to um, 10 pounds. So I think it's still a little bit heavier than what like a 90 millimeter acro, uh, an acromat uh, refractor would be. Just to give you an idea, one second. So here in my hand, I have a Celestron. This is the on Omni version. This is a four inch F 6.5 refractor. And I weighed it at five pounds. Now it doesn't have rings, so that will add a one or one pound for it because these are not really heavy duty uh, rings. But basically, uh, it's still a bit heavier than a 90 mil refractor would be. So anybody out there that wants to maybe put this on a, like an EQ1, forget about it. EQ2 is already, it's at pretty much at the limit. So I would say you probably need an EQ3 for this guy. But in the upside though, it's, you know, as I said in my first unboxing of this, which was, I think, roughly for my birthday, just over, I think it was like 13, 14 months ago. Um, it's actually good that it actually weighs a lot because anything that's weighs a decent amount is overbuilt and it's solid, you know, it's not flimsy. So that's good in a way too. Uh, I guess most uh, refractors too in the entry, whoa, put that down, in the entry level wouldn't come with a two inch focuser uh, dual speed anyway. And I believe uh, it's rotatable as well. But, um, and it's also notched uh, with numbers over here. But anyway, so we're getting, I don't think I've seen any video where it shows the Coronado solar scope the type three version for anybody that's used it in the night. So I just want to use it for that and let's see how it performs. Now my personal 
Um, guess is going to be, I think it's going to perform to what a uh, doublet Acromat should perform in a 90 millimeter um, refractor. This is F8.8.9. 8. 8. Now, also a neat feature of this too, it does uh, extend. The, the focuser extends, I think, around five and a half, six inches. So that might put it, instead of uh, 8, F8.9, 8. it's probably bringing it to a 10 and a half. So if I do need to extend it or use it like that, it's gonna be basically a 90 millimeter refractor, F10 and a half, F11, depending what that is uh, right now. But you could also slide it up for portability. So that's a feature that the entry and stuff wouldn't have anyway. But anyway, I think today's gonna to be a three quarter moon. Let's test it out on the moon. Let's see how much color it performs. Um, if you want to look at the lens, um, I'll get you closer. I think it looks a nice deep blue. The coating is very nice. Let me get you a little bit closer there. So as you can see, uh, that's nice coating there. But let's see how it performs uh, on the moon. So the moon is out. And basically, as I was saying before, I want to use this scope which is a solar scope, but it should be able to be used uh, in the nighttime. So even though it's still daytime out, it uh, the moon is out, so which means I could take a look at the moon. Okay, so we are gonna start looking at the moon, and I'm just putting in a 32 millimeter, inch and a quarter, super palazzo, and I'm just gonna check out the moon. Now I don't have a finder scope on this guy right now. Um, it has the Coronado solar scope, but that's not gonna help me find the nighttime stuff. So anyway, I'll do it manually. Okay, so I decided to switch to my need two inch super wide angle. Uh, 32 millimeter eyepiece because I don't have a finder scope on this guy uh, except for the solar one but that's not going to help me for the moon and nighttime stuff so that way it gives me a uh, twice as big field of view um, and I caught the moon uh, basically uh, I could definitely see color fringing um, around the perimeter easily so Although I don't know if it's any worse or any better, or basically is that the same um, as an Acromat would be. I mean, basically this is performing like a 90 millimeter, uh, 8.9. So it's going to have some color fringing, but um, that's what I see. I'm going to pump up the power a little bit more. Okay, switching back actually to a 32 millimeter inch and a quarter super plaza gives you the same uh, power but the field of view is just uh, half but it still looks okay still color fringing still there um, so I'll pump up the power now okay basically going to a 26 millimeter mead super palazzo and a 9.7 millimeters mead super palazzo I can see it um, I just don't know again is it more uh, CA uh, color fringing or not um, it's also the daytime so I don't know if that has anything to do with it I should try maybe in the night actually maybe what I, I'll do is I have a four inch uh, Celestron 6.5 and that's gonna have a lot of color in it uh, type of thing so I just want to see is it because I'm doing it now this test in the daytime that um, it's just not the best viewing so let, let me go take take a look. Okay guys, so I took out my, this is a Celestron 102, uh, 660 millimeter focal length. Uh, so which means it's F6.5. So it's still considered short um, or a wide field one. This one's at F8.9. So really it's a long format. Um, but it just seemed like to me that this one uh, had a lot of color fringing 
something that I remember like in using scopes that were like 80 millimeter f5 or like 102 millimeter f5 and it just that's why I wasn't really sure um, if it was really the daytime because it's a blue sky but on this one the white the moon is white I don't see no color fringing on the moon in this guy and we're at actually okay there is very very minor kind of like yellow at the rim but the moon overall is a nice white moon with gray zones and on this guy so that's on 25 the celestron 20 power and this one's 25 power and this one it's just not as clear it's almost like a rainbow effect and I'm giving you a second opinion. So, okay, babe. Hi, guys. Hi. Here, let me put it a little upper. Upper if it's a word. Not sure. Okay, babe. So, me here claims that this solar scope could do, well, we looked at the sun today, right? Yeah. We saw some flares. I think it's a very good, like, solar telescope. Big. But they say if you take the both filters off, it becomes a refractor like that. So okay. this is a 90 millimeter, 90 millimeter refractor, sure. And this is a, and that's a 102 millimeter. Um, so it says that this one, what do you think? The moon. It's only 20 power in that one. So not very- You can see the craters, yeah. Yeah, you can see the craters. Craters. Now look at here, tell me what you think. I see like a halo or is it? You tell me what, I haven't even explained to her what I think. So she was inside. So you tell me what you see. Which one seems clearer to you? It is a little low, but uh, being an Altazmuth AZ3, uh, it, it's looking up is a little difficult. Like a more like a beam, I don't yeah. Know if it's a beam, but, but it still looks you can see the craters and you can see which one do you like better? My... No, it's not your eyes. Which one do you like better? Yeah, this like looks like a little foggy, like a little. Okay, try that one again. Does it look clear? Does the color look better? You know what? It's going and moving a little bit. Send back okay. a little more. Let me use the slow motion controls. Oh yeah, it's almost done. Uh, bring it back in the center. There we go. And okay, so it's in the center. Let me go back on this guy. It's still in the center because I'm using the motor drives finally on this one. Remember, she's not 100% uh, like she's not, she hasn't been in the hobby very long. So, my personal opinion is yes, the Carnado, if you want a solar telescope that can also do the nighttime viewing, it will do it. However, I think to me, it looks almost like a rainbow effect on the moon. It's not as sharp as clear on this one. Now, it could be. And it makes sound of. Maybe I feel like a little halo. Like a halo. Yeah, the halo here is huge compared to that one. Yeah. But this one's F 8.9 and this one's 6.5. So the halo should be 100 times worse than this one. The shorter it is, or the wider it is, the more that halo is going to be worse. So that's basically, so I think the image is better, way, way better than that. Yeah. So, okay, guys, so my conclusion is going to be just on the moon anyway, but the moon is the brightest thing. So the Coronado telescope is a very good telescope for the solar viewing. And yes, Meet is correct that you can take out the filters and you can look at the nighttime stuff. So you have a dual telescope. But the problem is that I see is that I guess the lens is made specifically for the daytime viewing or the solar viewing that it can do it, but it's not perfect. So personally, I would just keep this as a solar telescope, and if you want, um, well, if you have just one option for just one telescope, that's it. You can have both. I guess, but the view to me is not good enough. It's it's average. It's so-so. I would yeah. rather have then a basic, like I said, 
It's this type of uh, OTA, or what they call the telescope without the mount, you can get used on the used market Canadian about 200 to 225. So my thinking would be get a four or five inch Acromat and then you have a much better telescope. Now of course this focuser is much better than that one, but I think the, the color correction and the image is just better on the Celestron. It's just more white. The moon looks yeah, more, yeah, white yeah, more white and uh, more, it's more like a blue, blurish. It looks blurry, but also that halo is there. Yeah. So and the halo is very extreme. I wasn't sure is it because we're viewing it in the daytime, maybe in the nighttime. But um, so I give it a double thumbs up for the sun, one thumbs up only for the nighttime. So that's where my conclusion is, guys. Uh, again, I'll say it one more time. Amazing scope for the sun. It can do the nighttime stuff, but, you know, so-so. Um, I would think if you have this guy and, well, you can't really afford anything else, then it's okay. But I would prefer, I think, for me, is just to use a different scope for the nighttime. But uh, that's where my conclusion is. Uh, meat is correct. It can do it. But maybe the lens is made a specific way or wavelength for the sun um, but uh, it can do it I guess so anyway this is Joe Jaguar show I'll see you on the next uh, video and I'm glad this one is in the daytime because some of them are so dark in the night you can hardly see us Joe Jaguar out